Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. Just over three and a half years ago, I needed a pressure washer to do a big task. And so I did my market research and I bought one made by Karcho. It was the K2. That machine was so good that I made a video about it. And that video has now had half a million hits. Well, unfortunately, the pressure washer it seems to go from one of my children to the other and I rarely get a chance to see it. But I don't mind that because now we've moved house, I need a little bit more substantial pressure washer. So again, I've done my market research. And because of the success of that original video, I'm lucky enough to have been lent a machine by Karcher. And it's exactly the machine that my recent market research uh, indicated that I should be getting. And this is it, it is the K5 power control. And this one comes with the home kit and the car kit. Now it's my intention to make three videos. This first video will show you how easy it is to assemble and I'll show you the basics of using a pressure washer. And then there will be two more videos. One will be about how to go about cleaning a car and the precautions you need to take and the other will be about cleaning block paving. It's not as straightforward as you think. Now let me quickly run through what comes in the box and I'm going to deal with these in two separate ways. First of all, on the right hand side you've got all the various parts that we're going to assemble shortly in order to make up the machine itself. But this particular machine comes with the home kit and the car kit. Now the home kit consists of this surface cleaner, some stone and paving cleaner, which is uh, uh, like a detergent one uses when one's cleaning patios and so on. And also uh, this extension wand here. Now the car kit comes with this uh, wash brush here. It comes with a, a drying cloth. It comes with this foam jet uh, appliance here. And also a bottle of car shampoo. And of course, we've also got instructions, an advice leaflet, and one or two other bits of paper, guarantee, and so on. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of that and just concentrate on the assembly of the machine. Now, in order to do the assembly, the only tool you need is a screwdriver, which has got a crosshead on it. Now, the instructions themselves are a little bit unclear as to which screws you use for which job. Now, I'm going to point this out to you, and this is how to work out which ones are right. Now, in this bag, there are two what they call plastic dowels, and that's used uh, to hold part of the uh, base in place. And there are two screws. Those two screws are used with these plastic dowels. Uh, there's also in this packet the little hose connector. So that's that packet. Then this other packet, which is divided into two, on this side, there are two machine screws. These are the sort of screws that you might put a nut on. In this other side, there are eight little self-tapper screws. Now, self-tapper is the sort of thing that you might screw into a piece of plastic or a piece of wood, and it makes its own sort of thread as it goes. Now, those are self-tappers. There are eight of those. Now, these machine screws uh, will be used when we're fixing the wheels in place, because it requires two screws, one for each wheel. And these self-tappers will be used to fit the various plastic parts and hold them in place. Now the first thing we're going to do is fit the wheels. And if you look very carefully, uh, the actual, um, I suppose you'd call it the axle, little stub axle, uh, has got two flats on it. It's not perfectly round. And there's a hole that goes all the way through. Now it's important that when you push this in that you line up the hole here so that a screw coming in from this direction can go through there and into a retaining nut which is behind. Just needed a little bit of encouragement. You'll remember two machine screws. These are ones that you could put a nut on if you wanted to. But one of those is now going to go down into a hole here and it will keep this wheel in place. And we'll do the same on the other side. You might need to put uh, something uh, thin and sharp, a knitting needle or a bradle or something like that down in there, just to encourage that to be lined up. And mine is perfectly okay, so I can now screw this in place. Now you may need to apply a little bit of force as you start to put this screw in, and then it should start to run uh, smoothly. Now I know that you'll want to know how tight it should be. Well, it should be 
tight enough so it feels as though it's come to the end of its desired travel and not so tight that you strip the thread. Uh, so just make sure it's in as far as you think it will go. Next we're going to fit the stand. The stand goes on the front of the machine and you'll see that these parts fit down into there. Now, so that's clicked in place. We now go to the packet which has got the two dowels and in that same packet are the two self-tapper screws that go uh, with this part. You can see where these dowels go. One's going to go there. If you look at the end of one of these dowels, you'll see it's got flats here. And if you look at the shape of this, you've got these parts here. So get the flats lined up with these, these parts. So, like so. Now I'm going to encourage that to go in just a little bit more, like so. So that's all the way home and that was only a very gentle tap and then I'm going to take the two screws. Now the, these screws uh, will take just a little bit of effort to put in uh, and just push hard as you go and when you know you're at the end don't over tighten it because it is only screwing into the plastic, it's self tapping, it's tapping itself into the plastic. So when you feel that extra bit of resistance stop. Now this is the next part uh, to put on, it's the spray lance storage. It's got a couple of little uh, tags at the top here which fit down into the top there, like so. That fits down and there are places for one, two screws there. Don't put a screw in anywhere down here yet. We're going to put the screw in here. It's very easy to over tighten a, a self tapper going into plastic. So just try and get a feel for when you should stop. Just till you reach resistance. Next is this bottom bit and you can see there are four little recesses in the piece we've just fitted and that's going to go in like that with obviously the word karcher up the correct way. That's it. And whilst we're here you can see where this gadget has to go. Uh, this is the thing that connects to your hose pipe. Now always check it's got a rubber washer inside. This one has, no problem at all. Make sure it goes back in properly, having checked it. And then screw it on hand tight. Now hand tight is quite tight, but not... Well, we're almost at the very end now. We've just got to put the handle at the top here. Now one way round, it doesn't fit in properly. The other way round, it sort of gets snuggled in there. Well, and then again, there are two screws. And these again are the ordinary short screws. We had eight of them, if you remember, to start with. That's that. So that's the handle on. And the final thing to install is this bit of netting, uh, which goes into this area here. This is the cable storage area. And all the way around here are these little sort of hooks. And one gets that in, it sort of clicks in behind. It's very, very simple. It doesn't take any skill whatsoever. Well, put it this way, I can do it. And that's that in. Cable sort of slips in there, like so. And it keeps it all tidy. Right, having completed the assembly, we're going to use the machine, but the first thing I want to do is talk to you about safety precautions. Now, when you use a pressure washer, it's quite possible that the force of the water can cause small stones or small chips of wood to fly in the air, and you've really got to look out for your eyes. And so, therefore, always wear some form of eye protection, and I've got these safety glasses, but uh, good quality plastic glasses that you might wear all the time would uh, probably help. But you, but you could also wear some sunglasses or something like that if required. The other precaution is never aim the uh, nozzle at either people or pets or animals of any description uh, because the force of the water is really, really powerful. You can blind someone, uh, you can cause uh, skin injuries. So just be careful. But don't get worried, this isn't a dangerous operation. This is just the precautions. Okay, 
let's go and get this machine ready for action. Now, because we're going to be doing some of the sort of patio work, I've got the area cleaning uh, gadget here. Now, the actual lance, the bit with the handle, needs to be connected to the pressure washer hose. Now, if you look really carefully, you'll see that this end, this sort of brass shiny end to the uh, pressure hose, has got two flats on it. And it may not be visible to you with the camera, but if you look up inside here where it's going to connect, you'll see there are two parallel sided pieces of metal and they're parallel here and here. Now you're going to, you're going to fit this in so that the flat of this goes that way. So there's the flat there and there, and it's gonna go in there and you're gonna push until it clicks and that's held it in. If you need to release that, there's a release trigger just here. And you can release that by pressing that trigger and away it comes. So that's the first connection done. Now I'm going to start by using the, uh, the wand here. So you push in, twist anti-clockwise to connect it. Push in and twist clockwise to release it. Now you probably see that having coiled up the pressure hose, uh, it doesn't want to straighten itself out very easily. So what I would suggest you do is pull it out and start twisting it like this in order to get rid of those little loops and therefore straighten the hose. And it would be actually easier to do this without this handle on. Now at this point let me just emphasize how handy it is that this machine comes with a 10 meter long pressure hose. That means that the machine can be out of the way whilst you're doing so much of the work. Very handy indeed. Now I have now connected the hose and turned the water on, but at this stage I've not connected the electricity. Now in the instructions, Karcher say that you can, at this stage, turn the electricity on and operate the nozzle in order to get rid of any air in the system. But I like to do it a different way. Having connected the water and turned it on, but before connecting electricity, can you hear that trigger pulled and eventually water is flowing through. That is a better way of doing it in my, to my mind. If you can get rid of the air before you turn the electricity on, it's much better. If you follow the Karcher recommended way by turning electricity on, you can wait up to two minutes until you hear all the air go but after two minutes you have to release the trigger. And with my method, you're good to go the moment you connect the power. Now supplied with this machine is this stone and paving cleaner. It's a detergent of sorts and it gives all sorts of uh, benefits, so it says, and it will connect directly into the machine. I'll show you that shortly. Let me just point this little cap out to you, this gray cap at the top. You have to take that off. There it is, that grey cap, and then you can now connect this to the washer. Now, we're going to use this at the very beginning, just gently to spread some of this uh, chemical across the paving. Having taken that grey stopper off, all you do is you just lower this down into there, and that's it. It doesn't have to click, it just sits there, and it does its bit. Now, on the uh, pressure wand itself, you want to turn this into the soft position. And you can see uh, when you start using it on this uh, indicator on the handle, uh, whether you're in hard, medium, soft, or in the rinse position, which is where we will be now. So I'm just going to spray gently across this area here, leave it for a couple of minutes, and then pressure wash it off. Now the other thing I'd like you to note is I've got the machine here. I've got the electricity cable going off in that direction as far as it will stretch to my little junction box. So that helps to keep that side of things safe. And meanwhile, with this long pressure hose here, the 10 meter long pressure hose, I'm free to go quite a distance away from the actual machine. So I've got my detergent. I'm in the soft position, rinse, and here we go takes a second or two for the detergent to come through as you can probably see there it is and for the next stage 
I do not need to use the detergent. So I just lift that off like so, find my little cap, put it back on. It did click when I did that. Now the way I'm going to go about this, I'm going to use the, the pressure nozzle in the hard position to do some of it. And then I'm going to switch over to the area tool there, which I know is going to be a lot easier. And what I hope you can see is how effective this high pressure nozzle is at getting the moss which is in the, the grout or the uh, pointing on these slabs. Now the advantage of this tool on this machine is that it's got this hinge mechanism here and I can assure you that makes a huge difference when you're operating this for a long period of time. And on the dial here I've put it into the hard position because this is several years of stubborn dirt. Well, I really hope this sort of before and after shot that you can see behind me here really does demonstrate how good this is. Now, this machine is terribly easy to use. Uh, there's no real weight when you're using that area tool at all, and it's really handy because it's uh, got that hinge mechanism on it. So at no stage do you have to lift the weight at the end. Now, it was my assumption at the beginning that I would have to use the pressure lance to get rid of the moss on the pointing between these slabs. But I've noticed that it comes off pretty easily using this gadget. You watch. Well, I think that really does prove just how good this gadget is. I think it's absolutely brilliant and it is far better than the original one that came with my little K2. And when you finish using the machine, turn the water off and then disconnect your hose. And then you need to clear out as much the water from the machine as possible. You're allowed to squeeze the trigger with no water going into the machine for up to one minute. And you then have to manually turn the machine off. So that's it. You've emptied the machine to the best of your ability. Now, do not store the machine anywhere where the frost can get at it. In other words, it must not go down to freezing where you store the machine. Because there will be some bits of water in there. Because ice expands and ice can damage water pumps. So that's it. I think that's pretty impressive. Now, that's it for this video. I'm going to be doing two more. One is about cleaning a car. Not quite as straightforward as you think. Number of precautions to take. And the other is about cleaning block paving. It may sound straightforward, just like the patio work I've done here, but it's not. And there are a number of things you have to do once you've finished the pressure washing to make sure you don't create any damage to your block paving. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.